Welcome to uh, the lovely Epsom Downs race course. Um, my name is Mark Robbins, I'm a founder here of Native Gravity, a digital talent uh, specialist here in the UK and uh, welcoming uh, Dan from the Home Office. Um, he's done a talk on the visa application uh, process this afternoon, so yeah, welcome. Um, just to kick things off, I uh, would like to ask about, I guess a lot of employers are asking about the application process. How efficient, how effective, and, and sort of, um, I guess, from, from, from their perspective, how easy is it to sort of go about it at the moment? Yeah, so if you are sponsoring uh, an overseas worker to come and, uh, and work in the UK, we've made a number of processes, changes to kind of make that a slicker, faster uh, process for our employers. Mm -hmm. So we have reduced the um, processing time by up to eight weeks by removing the resident labour market tests. Mm. We've suspended our cap of numbers. We have changed the way we issue certificates of sponsorship to kind of quicken that up. Um, but we know that we need to do more. Um, we have published, it was just uh, in the past few weeks, our sponsorship roadmap. Um, and that kind of sets out our vision for how that whole system is going to be overhauled over the next few years. Um, we want to make that a really uh, much improved service for employers, but also the customer journey. So that the yeah. applicants applying for the visas, we're going to get a whole new IT system on there. Mm. And we're really at that listening stage at the moment okay. where we want to make sure that we can remove the barriers for small businesses and just make it more accessible for everyone. Um, and in terms of, of costs for, for employers, what does that range for, for a small business on average now? What's the so there are reduced rates uh, yeah. for small businesses yeah. and uh, charities. Um, mm. fee that you pay depends on the, the size and nature of your business. Mm. There are also fees that go alongside that for um, you apply to get your sponsorship license, that will entail a fee. You, you will pay a fee for each person that you sponsor to come into the UK and you may also have to pay the immigration skills surcharge if that's to applicable okay. to the role that you fill in. You mentioned your talk um, around a graduate's visa. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was quite interesting. Can you just give us a quick overview yeah, of what, so what that looks that's like? That's our most recent route to open. So that opened in July. Yeah. And what that means is that any foreign students who graduate in the UK from a higher, higher education establishment with a good track record of compliance, mm. um, they can apply for a graduate visa, which allows them to remain in the UK after their studies mm. for two years, mm -hmm. three years if you graduate with a PhD. And yep. during that time frame, you can uh, work in any profession, you can work at any skill level, any salary level, um, and that's a, that's a two or three year visa. Great. And that's really good for yeah. employers because you don't need to sponsor that individual to mm -hmm. do that, so you don't need to be, you there's don't no have to sponsor license, yep. you don't have to pay. Obviously there's a fee for the applicant, but not for the employer. Okay, fantastic. I went through a scenario in my head of, of a candidate we, we spoke to recently, um, marketing director, um, coming out from South Africa has an Irish passport um, I understand it's very straightforward for yeah, that individual yeah. so um, what's really important to know in the mm. when we're discussing things like the new points based system or even the EU settlement scheme yeah. The, the, our relationship with Ireland and the common travel area has not changed. If someone has an Irish passport, they are an Irish national. Mm -hmm. They do not to. They don't not, don't need to be sponsored. They can come in. They can work at any skill level in any role. They don't need to apply to the EU settlement scheme either. Mm -hmm. They can do because they're mm -hmm. eligible because they are also an EU national. But they don't need to as an as an Irish citizen. Okay. Um, and obviously, look at the EU settlement scheme. I understand it was the end of last year. Was kind of. The, the cutoff. Are you still receiving applications? What's, yeah, what's the so latest with that in terms so of deadlines? The, the cutoff for people to make applications was the 30th of June of this year, and yep. those eligible are those uh, EU nationals and their family members who were in the UK before the end of last year. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure really that, that no one is left behind. So if you haven't yet made an application to the scheme, we are still accepting applications. We are still receiving late applications. Yep. So if you didn't uh, understand what you need to do, you weren't aware, mm. you couldn't get on the internet, you didn't have the English language skills, we will still continue to accept late applications. Yep. And also in scenarios where someone may have been prevented from making an application, mm. they might have been a victim of domestic violence, mm -hmm. they might have been a victim of modern slavery, if it's a child and their parents never applied, please, 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 we just encourage everyone to, to continue to, to make applications if they uh, were in the UK before the end of last year. Okay, great. And um, I guess from an agency or an employer perspective, obviously just check-in statuses is, is important. Um, has our, has our sort of process changed? I know obviously online checking was, was there. obviously yeah. the pre-settlement status checking as well. Yeah. What do we need to do as an absolute minimum? So for 
uh, those who are employing EU nationals, it's actually a lot more straightforward now. Mm. We're not really, employers don't have to interpret lots of different identity documents. They don't need to know whether, is this a, an Italian ID card? Yeah. Um, if someone has status under the uh, EU settlement scheme, or indeed they're an EU national who has status under the points-based system, mm -hmm. or actually an EU national who's got status under the graduate route, yep. we're giving more and more people these digital immigration statuses. And what they do there is they log into their status, they produce a share code mm -hmm. that they can present to their employer or a landlord or another service provider. All you need to do then is log in via gov.uk, um, you enter the share code that you've been given and the applicant's date of birth, and that will present you with a picture of the person mm -hmm. and what their entitlements are and, and their visa status. So it's a lot more straightforward. And in general, so we've all, we made some concessions to right to work checks during mm -hmm. the COVID period. Mm -hmm. So for those people who don't fall into that category yeah. of having that status, we suspended um, the having to do in-person checks we let them be done digitally that's right yeah um, just been we, extended yeah, yeah we've just extended that yeah. that's from direct feedback from employers yeah. and so there's going to be that situation until next year hopefully that will continue i think it's it but can be a nightmare with remote workers I trying mean, to meet in, them etc in general yeah. it's that uh you know direction of travel in that yeah. we want a, a digital immigration system yeah okay great um I don't know if there's any other sort of tips and tricks or anything that I've kind of not 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 sort of no, covered I mean, that you'd, you'd, you'd like I, I to highlight. I definitely or? think that the big question for employers now is, is do I need to become a home office sponsor or not? Yeah. So it's important that you look at um, the people that you are trying to recruit and, and obviously we want people to also look at the resident labour market mm. um, and there are categories of people that you can employ without becoming a sponsor. So we've mentioned the graduate route yep. but there is also our um, route that opened in January for Hong Kong nationals or so British nationals overseas, yep. Hong Kong visa um, that's again a really straightforward online application process mm. and that's for um, Hong Kong nationals protected who uh, feel that moving to the UK is an appropriate choice for them so mm. that represents our, our government's commitment to, to our, its Hong Kong British nationals overseas citizens those people can apply they can bring their family members to them and those people again can work in the UK without mm. being sponsored okay and um, uh, HR directors recruitment Managers, business owners, um, they often want to know where to start. Just sort of, you know, yeah. it's a real headache for them. They they've got a skill shortage in the team. Where do they start? Who do they need to speak to? You know. Yep. So we've got, you, you know. we've got a real suite of resources on gov.uk. So we've mm. got an introduction to the points-based system mm. um, for employers. Yep. We've got guides that are aimed at EU nationals, EU workers, EU visitors. Mm. We've even got a, a podcast that you can download and okay. listen while you're out yep. on a power walk. Yep. Uh, there's plenty of materials. Big out fan there. of those. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, Dan, thanks very much for uh, taking your time today, and um, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. All right.